What's going on guys, Sam Adams here and welcome to The Drop, which is a weekly series every single Monday right here on the YouTube channel where I go through the top video game releases of the week and let you guys know what new games are coming out just in case you do want to pick up something new. And as far as I'm concerned, this is the last major video game release week in 2015. We've got two of the year's biggest titles hitting this Tuesday along with one other one that I thought was worth an honorable mention. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So kicking things off, we have Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege coming out on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. And this is supposedly what came of the canceled Rainbow Six Patriots for any of those out there that were wondering. Uh, so there is no campaign within this game that like literally there is none. And uh, pretty much the game thrives off of these objective based tasks. Maybe you have to make a bomb go off. Perhaps you have to defuse a bomb. Maybe you just have to hunt down the enemy players in an elimination kind of game mode. But in general, I think that it works out pretty well. And the fact that it doesn't have a campaign doesn't necessarily mean that that's a detriment to the game as a whole. One thing that the developers are really pushing with this release is the amount of destruction in the environment. Uh, if there's a wooden surface, if there's a plastic surface, if there's anything that you would normally be able to shoot through or bust through in real life in the game, then you're probably going to be able to do that within Rainbow Six Siege, and I think that this creates some interesting dynamics for the game. Uh, what I mean by that is that if you have a wooden wall and you know that there is an entrance on the other side of that wall, you can literally uh, either hit it with the butt of your gun or just shoot a couple of rounds through that wall and it will break off a little chunk and you can actually get a direct line of sight to where the enemy is going creating some more tactical ability and whatnot and in general I feel like that works out pretty well and the fact that the other team can also do that means that that kind of ability is definitely not overpowered. In addition to this there are 20 different operators or characters that you can choose to play as and I think that this was a pretty good decision because they do range from pretty much the weakest of the week to someone that's wearing all but fallout power armor so you have a whole bunch of different options of how you want to approach the objective and these 20 different operators also allow a lot of variety as far as team goes not many people are going to select the exact same character in fact I think that you actually can't which is a pretty good idea but in general the teams feel pretty balanced and the game feels balanced as a whole and I think that this is one of the better tactical games that I have played in my years of gaming I'm not really that into the uh, silent kind of tactical shooters but this one does capture my attention because it feels like something I've never really experienced before and there is a certain amount of realism with it. So if that sounds like something you're interested in picking up, this one's coming on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC this week. And if you are quick enough, you might be able to hop onto that beta that I'm playing tonight on Sunday. Next up, Just Cause 3 is coming on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. And this game is set several years after the events of Just Cause 2. The main character of Just Cause 2, Rico, has returned to his hometown. No one really cares what happened to him, how he got there. He left the agency he was with and now there's just another warlord in his hometown and he's trying to prevent him from taking over the world just cause is totally about the giant explosions the uh, amount of guns that are in the game the amount of uh, different kinds of vehicles that you can do and there's just tons of creativity just pouring out of every hole in this game i absolutely love the idea of just cause 3 and i actually can't wait to get my hands on it but as far as improvements go from just cause 2 uh, as far as map size it's pretty much identical you got 400 100 square miles yes 400 square miles to kind of explore and see what it has to offer and in addition to this now there are underwater caverns that you can go swimming and um and explore in and of course uh, with the um, grappling hook that was from Just Cause 2 you can now grapple from one thing to another and what I mean by that is that if I wanted to say attach this cup to this water bottle then I could literally grapple from one thing to another and then they would be tethered together so obviously uh, a lot of gifts have been going around the internet of people that have gotten this game early and they're attaching cows to windmills they're attaching people to cars they're attaching people to windmills people to cows there are a ton of options here people and you have the ability to do them all. So with the agility of the grappling hook and the new kind of additions that have been made on that end, along with the wingsuit and the maneuverability of that, it seems like Just Cause 3 is going to have even more fluid action motion than Just Cause 2 did. And as a whole, the game is shaping up to be one of the best and most action-packed games of 2015, potentially one of the most action-packed games of the next couple of years. So if you're looking for something with a ton of explosions, testosterone, uh, cows, uh, drug lords, then you're definitely definitely going to want to check out Just Cause 3, which again, it's coming to the PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One this week. 
Finally, last but not least, we have Xenoblade Chronicles 10 coming to the Wii U, and uh, this is an action role-playing game that takes place in the year 2054, where the Earth has been destroyed, but a few select people escaped on a ship called the White Whale. Uh, two years later, the aliens that destroyed the Earth come, and they take down the ship, uh, the White Whale, and it crash lands on this planet called Mira, and so the humans have to establish a new colony of New Los Angeles, and they have to kind of live alongside the creatures that were originally there on Mira. So pretty much the entire thing is about sustainability ability, trying to find resources and defending yourself against the aliens. It is a very, very Japanese action role-playing game. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then you should definitely check out Xenoblade Chronicles 10 on the Wii U, which is shaping up to be one of the biggest releases of 2015 on the Wii U, of which there aren't many, but still it's one of the major ones that a lot of Nintendo fanboys are looking forward to. So there you guys have it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, drop me a like down below and share this video so that more people can find the channel. Also, are you picking up anything new this week? Have you been looking forward to Just Cause 3? Are you a huge fan of the Rainbow Six franchise and like where Siege is taking the entire series? Or are you a Wii U fan and you want to pick up Xenoblade Chronicles 10? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And if you are new to the channel or you've never seen any of my other videos, be sure to head over there and check out some of the other content because I do upload new stuff like three or four days a week to depending on the week, so there's always something new on the channel when you drop by to watch some videos. And as always, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this particular video. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. <laughs>